Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here. Let's get straight into the FAQ, the errata, and of course the confusion. That's right, I am in fact using the exact same thumbnail as the last errata. That's called efficiency. You're welcome. Uh, for those of you that just want to just use my channel as Kill Team News releasing, uh, you could, uh, there is a link below in the description. You can go and read all of these yourself. It's just on the standard Warhammer Community FAQ page. Let's have a quick look at what we're getting into here. So, there is no mention of Shadow Vaults. Uh, this is far too close to the Shadow Vaults release for us to get any updates. They usually leave it like two, three months after a release-ish. Uh, so this is Into the Dark Changes, okay? Shadow Vaults, Kasakin, Hyrotech, that was the other team. No changes, all right? There are a total of 51 changes, okay? Novitiates, blood, I've put blood, blooded, and hunter clade, no changes. Everything else has at least one change and even some compendium, which I'm, I'm actually a little bit shocked by. Uh, primarily, this is clearing up rules and this is not a balanced data slate, okay? And the balanced data slate is not touched. This is just fixing typos, fixing that sort of thing, okay? Want to make that super clear? However, with that said, there are definitely 100% some changes here that are going to significantly change the balance of the game, primarily looking at the Phobos when I say that, but we're gonna get into it. Also, if you are unaware, I have the final bullet point there, congrats to my Discord. That is because a lot of these changes and questions asked come directly from my Discord. So thanks to the guys in there that hash out the rules in blood-soaked uh, discussion. Uh, it's a real marketplace of ideas in there, let me tell you. I steer clear of it, but then I pass it on and we get a lot of questions answered. So thank you to everybody in there. And with that said, I'd like to give, a, you know, subscribers only for the next slide, of course. But if you are a subscriber, I'd like to give you a big double hello. Wow, so wholesome. What is a double hello? Well, a double hello is, of course, uh, just something that I give to the people to know that they're wanted in life, you know. Uh, also, hey... You know, like, if you're a Patreon, I give you data cards and objective markers and stuff. Also, this weekend, I'm going to be playing my Grey Knights. Ignore the Bane Blade, that's just there for fun. I'll be playing my Grey Knights uh, into Death Watch because, you know, hashtag long live the compendium. And I, am I, I'm I right. Also, coming up very soon on the channel, I do want to say, uh, you may have heard of it. Kill Team Open. If you're coming to Kill Team Open then that's a thing that maybe we can talk about and I might have a thing for you to have uh, that will allow you to come to Kill Team Open. Okay, let's get into it. Uh, first up, we have the core changes and I've delightfully put one of these behind me. I've moved it, boom, fixed. Uh, so to be clear, I am now just going to read all of these out. That's right, 51 changes. How quick can I do it? Let's go. Charge action. If an operative has a rule that allows it to perform a charge action while within engagement range of an enemy operative, it can move out of engagement range of enemy operatives, but must still finish that move within engagement range of at least one enemy operative. So I believe the reason they put this in, perhaps, uh, is due to the intercession rule that had the they had uh, an ability there called Raider, and people had to really think real hard about how that worked. So instead of changing how Raider worked and getting real finickety, they've just changed the charge action. So cool. Uh, controlling objective markers and tokens. During operative activations, determine control of objective markers and tokens at the start and the end of each individual action. Cool, so the reason for this was done is because if you just move past an objective, so from one side to the other, do you change it? There are some maps where simply being on the objective allows you to control it, and then uh, when you move away from it, you still keep it. So you don't have to stand on it for the whole game. But if you just move from one end to the other, did you ever actually move on it? Hmm. Uh, we then have, we'll get to the wall trace in a sec. Spec Ops campaigns. Uh, basically, if you perform mission action, mission actions, you get uh, an XP point. And they've said, no, operating a hatch does not count. Okay, so good. Uh, it, it was obvious that that didn't count. Uh, but yeah, cool. Wall trait. Let's see what they do with this, because wall trait B, you know, okay. Distance cannot be measured over or through wall terrain. 
you must measure around it using the shortest possible route as shown in the diagram below. However, measure distances to areas of the kill zone through walls, e.g. the center of the kill zone or drop zones, but not objective markers or tokens. Measure distances to areas of the kill zone through walls, the center of the kill zone or drop zones, but not... Okay. Okay. Interesting. So I assume not objective markers or tokens, uh, but drop zones. Yeah, so basically this is going to change a little bit how we... This fixes, I would say, just, you know, from a, from a quick read of it, uh, issues with like forward deploy, because there was a possibility where you could deploy like literally on the other side of a wall, but you were like right next to the enemy's drop zone. That was pretty broken. Uh, so this is a good change. Um, it also means it, it unbreaks certain maps. I think there was one map, in, only one in fairness, where technically if you wanted to, like, you can never measure through a wall and if a wall ever crosses the center line, uh, you can never technically score, you know, central control, that kind of thing. Okay. If an operative's characteristics are modified during an action, does that impact the action it's currently performing? For example, if an operative's movement characteristics is modified during a normal move action as a result of being injured. No. Unless otherwise specified, apply the modifiers once the action it's performing is completed. Cool. Good. Some rules clarify that a modifier should only be applied if an enemy operative is activated within X of the relevant objective or operative, e.g. Rust Amination's strategic ploy, that's hard to claim, uh, Gellapox infected. What am I talking about? Gellapox infected. Uh, only subtract circle for their movement characteristic as a result of being injured if they are activated within engagement range of that friendly optic. What does this mean? What? Yeah. Okay. I, I do like when they sometimes just end a sentence with, what does this mean? <laughs> like, what? Uh, do not apply that specific modifier unless the optic is activated within X of the relevant optic in the example movement would be, yeah. Um, don't know why they had to clarify it. Cool. Does an action performed when an operative hasn't been activated count as an activation, e.g. Overwatch or a free dash action from Recon and Scout Set? No. Uh, okay, cool. Good to know. Hasn't been activated. Cool. There, there's probably some interaction that I'm unaware of that that matters about. Uh, this is the last for the core changes. We're about to get into the Gallo Dark, and then after that, into all of the teams. If an operative carrying an objective marker or token loses the ability, hold on, I've put these on top of each other so I can't read what's underneath it, haven't I? There we go, hold on. Perfect, nice. If an operative carrying an objective marker or token loses the ability to perform the pickup action during that battle, what happens to that objective marker? The operative must drop it. Cool, so for those of you unaware, uh, the ability to drop a token is included in the pickup action um, text, but it specifically says that it doesn't cost any AP to do. You could just drop something. Um, so it's kind of it's a little bit confusing. Uh, so it's just good clarification that they've said, no, nope, just just drop it, just go. Uh, you you can't do it, uh, which is a little bit odd, but cool. If an operative performs uh, an action during another action, e.g. an operate hack, an operate hack action, ooh, during a normal move action, when can they be interrupted for things like a guard attack or the Phobos strike team in cursor marksman track target action? After that operative performs any action, even if another action is still ongoing, in the example you could interrupt them after they perform the operate hack trend. I'm going to have to take a quick swig from my glass half dead branded uh, thing. My gosh, these are tough words. I'm just going to throw this out there. Every sentence is a tongue twister. After that operative performs any action, even if another action is still ongoing. In the example, you can interrupt them after they perform the operate hatch, a operate hatch action or after they fully perform the normal move action. Uh, for the plant banner tack op, can an operative that cannot perform the pickup action be selected to carry the banner token? No. Good. Good clarification. Uh, when using the sentry's mission rules, when do you determine line of sight for raising the alarm? Before and after an action is performed. Operatives can move into line of sight during an action, but the alarm isn't raised unless they start or finish that action in line of sight. For the Duel of Wits mission, Critical Ops mission pack core book, do players have to select different objective markers to be a priority objective marker? Yes. Uh, I do like 
it seems like you know they're 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 building a pretty cohesive profile for the fact uh, of how you inter uh, interact with certain things one of them being movement essentially in most circumstances you te you are teleporting until something stops you kind of um and line of sight doesn't stop you and that's yeah until a specific thing says it interrupts you. Otherwise, you basically just go from point to point. You're not really moving. Okay. Gallo Dark. Uh, right. Additional rules. Some tactical ploys allow one or more optives to be set up outside of your drop zone. E.g. sneaky get from commandos and dimensional translocation from Hyrotech Circle. In a battle that uses close quarters rules, you cannot do so. Instead, you can only use such tactical ploys once per battle at the start of the first firefight phase, and they allow one operative specified by the ploy that is wholly within your drop zone to perform a free, normal move, and or operate hatch action. Whoa, bro. That's, that's okay. So in fairness, there aren't actually that many forward deploy rules in the game. Uh, there's Commandos, there's Hyrotech Circle, there's Hunter Clade, and there's Worm Cult. And I, I won't say that's it, but that is, a, I mean, I thought that they had, you know, done that change at the beginning um, to, to stop the forward deploy, but no, they've just said, no, you can't do it. Wow. Okay, that's really big. Like, for all of those teams, all of those teams always did a forward deploy. There was no time you didn't. So that's a huge change. Again, they're changing the wordings, they're adding rules, but they're not supposed to be nerfing a specific team or anything. It's not meant to be a balance change, but that is a huge balance change for those four factions. Okay, <clears throat> wall trait. Um, we already read this. I don't know why that's here again. Cool. Gallo Dark. Question. In Killzone Gallo Dark, the wall trait says, Operatives cannot move over or through wall terrain regardless of any other rules other than as a result of the accessible trait. Do you really mean this? Right. Or can I... Uh, excuse me, GW, you wrote a rule. Are you sure? We don't believe you. All right. Or can optives move through walls as a result of rules like breach and breach point? Yes, we really mean this. So this is quite funny because I know that there are a lot of rules that Games Workshop doesn't answer because as far as they're concerned, if you understand the game, and you read the rule, the rule is correct. And so they do not answer it because they don't want to answer every single question that every single person has. Because essentially they're saying, if you understand the rules, we have written it correctly. It's, so it's quite funny when they just say, okay, we, we kind of have to answer this one because we realize it's a bit thematically confusing maybe. So yes, we really mean this. As unique as it might seem, allowing certain optives to move through walls breaks a fundamental feature of Killzone Gallo Dark, therefore it's prohibited in order to maintain the experience and balance that we feel is appropriate for this Killzone. A fair answer. On mission maps that use Killzone Gallo Dark, does the position of hatchways indicate which direction the hatch should open in? No, they simply identify the orientation of long walls with hatchways. Oh, I, I did a short video clarifying that, by the way. If I interrupt an enemy operative's activation with guard, but then cannot complete a guard attack, is the operative still on guard? For example, there could no uh, there could be no valid targets such as if a novitiate player uses the blinding aura act of faith. Yes, that's a good clarification because I think, if I'm honest, I had read it the other way. So I had assumed that if you get blinding aura, you've used your guard action. Um, and then, I mean, it's just a, a really strong ploy for, or you know, thing to do for novitiates, so that's good. Alright, let's do it. How does the guard, yeah, there's a lot of Gallo Dark here, obviously. How does the guard action work when the operative must perform a shoot action with a specific weapon, e.g. Bolted Discipline, Exalted Astarte, Dak Dash, etc. The operative can perform the guard action so long as the relevant weapon is selected if it performs Overwatch or Point Blank Overwatch during the subsequent guard attack. I'll talk about that a bit later. Can an operative equipped with a ranged weapon that has the heavy special rule perform a normal move, fullback, or charge action, then perform a guard action in the same activation? If so, can it subsequently use the heavy weapon for the guard attack? Yes. 
If an operative incapacitates an enemy operative in a hatchway fight action, can rules that take effect when an enemy operative is incapacitated in combat within engagement range or one inch still work? E.g. the Robin Ransack attack op? Yes. Can an operative perform a hatchway fight action as a guard attack as a hatchway fight action is treated as a fight action? Yes. In Killzone Gather Dark, does the hatch of an open hatchway provide cover and is it obscuring? Yes. Treat cover lines that go underneath it as crossing it. In Killzone Gather Dark, how do you resolve rules that require an operative to be within a certain distance of heavy terrain? Resolve this by only using pillars and wall ends, excluding wall ends for hatchways and heavy terrain from a Killzone Gather Dark supplement. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, huge changes. <laughs> huge changes. Sorry. Huge clarifications. Uh, yeah, huge clarifications. So it, it's good that we got all of those. Those are all very important. They come up in a lot of games, but they're also quite minor things and they don't stop the game dead. But this is like great to get all of this clarified. Um, if you have a heavy weapon, you can move and still do something just like you could with an Overwatch, which is an interesting one because you were not able to move and shoot and of course guard is treated as a shoot act or is a shoot action but the way that guard is worded is that you don't actually ever end up selecting your weapon until the guard action occurs which therefore means for example if you had a heavy weapon and a pistol which many you know for example a craft world elder uh, ranger does um i could say that I'm moving, and then I could perform a guard action, which is like, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, and I, I have to be allowed to do that because I have a pistol. Maybe I want to fire the pistol, and that's legal. But once you perform the guard action, you're out of the activation, and so the stipulations of heavy no longer have any effect. So when you then go to make your shoot action, you could use the heavy weapon. There's no legacy kind of... Uh, remembered thing once you're out of an activation with a model uh, which in a sense seems a little bit kind of counterintuitive to what it then says uh, earlier about picking you have to pick the same weapon twice I've seen people arguing about it in my rules chat um, and I, th I think Miriam specifically came to the conclusion that that is how it should work so I'm just gonna let them <laughs> all right fine I guess uh, everything else super cool there I think clearing up the hatchway fight is good because there were a few things there as they call out um, certain tack ops that required engagement range and then felt a little bit bad that you could get the kill and perform everything but you weren't in engagement range and blah 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 let's talk about the compendium compendium you know i've got my gray knights here playing them this weekend right so uh, what well, tomorrow my gosh oh time flies when you hate life doesn't it uh death watch veteran fire team death watch bolt gun power weapon uh, cool. So I don't think this was actually a new thing. In fact, it wasn't. And what happened was, you see that little dot? I mistook that for an asterisk. So that's not new. You know what? Hold up. Boom. It never happened. I never said that. Instead, we got a sweet change to the Tyranids. The only true compendium team, obviously. Uh, the Lurk strategic ploy. Lurk. Deploy. If it is in cover and either has a concealed order or is ready, one additional dice can be retained as a successful normal save as a result of cover, regardless of any rules that treat the operative as having an engage order, e.g. vantage point. Cool. Good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is how it should work, I feel. This makes sense. Nice. All right. Um, that, sorry, that, sorry, guys. That's the only compendium change. Bit of a shame, but... Uh, Corsairs, for the purposes of the plunderous strategic ploy, how do you determine the closest objective marker if one or more hatchways are closed? Always determine the closest objective marker if, as if all hatchways are open. Now, I can't remember the question off the top of my head, but there is another part of, I think, plunderers? Or it might be um, the, uh, the ambush ploy they have, uh, which really needed some clarification, but fine. This is just them... GW touching up some, uh, yeah, some Gallo Dark stuff. Commandos. Tacop. No longer in use. You cannot blow it up. 
This makes total sense, obviously, because this tack op is essentially the same as um, one of the tack ops from the generic ones that was banned, uh, which is just stand next to heavy and blow it up. Yep, this makes sense. Can a bomb squid score victory points for the capture hostage and infiltrate tack op when it's incapacitated as a result of its bomb squid special rule? No. So obviously, this is just a, an amusing thing uh, in that your, your bomb squid could have run up gotten a kill in melee, immediately died, but technically he kills the enemy before he dies, I think. Uh, and so there's a tack op that says if you kill an enemy, um, you get a VP, essentially, uh, in melee. So, he, uh, but the idea is it's called capture hostage, capture hostage. Uh, so just the amusing cognitive dissonance there of uh, your bomb squeak. Very, very, very momentarily having captured a hostage. Legionary. Uh, so again, we get another tack op unusable, which is interesting. Uh, I don't even know what dark desecration is. I'm gonna oh, what a what a loser. Jeez, what does it do? Terrain activated while within one of the terrain feature. Oh, okay, right. Because you're always within one of heavy terrain, so they remove it. Yeah. Uh, but then they have how do interruptions after an an operative performs an action, e.g., guard work with the perpetual aggression strategic ploy? Treat the move as a separate action. Therefore, the corn operative can be interrupted after fighting in combat before or after it moves from perpetual aggression. So interesting to note here, obviously the corn operative can be interrupted at every step in its perpetual aggression thing, but also it doesn't have to be the corn operative that is shot at, and it doesn't have to be one of your models. I'm, I'm literally just explaining how guard works if, if you're confused here. Um, so you could, you know, this could be a real killer for the legionary team. If they've got a bunch of models on guard and you think you're about to run in there and get some crazy perpetual aggression kills. No, no, you're going to get your guys wrecked. Pathfinders, for the purposes of determining if one less attack dice is rolled as a result of the condensed environment rule, when a drone operative is protecting a friendly operative as a result of savior protocols, do you draw cover lines to the protected operative or the drone operative? The protected operative. This makes sense, um, yep, because as far as the rules are worded, the drone just is doing a thing. It, it hasn't actually moved or anything, so yeah. Phobos, right, there's, uh, how much is there for Phobos? Two, okay, this, there's two pages for Phobos. So, let's start with the shot grenade. Costs two EP. Now, in fact, you know what the hold of the Phobos changes? A little bit odd, because... I'm like, okay, so, uh, Infiltrator Medic, he has, he can't heal himself, cool. That seems like a legit typo that uh, has, you know, they missed, fine. Everything else kind of feels like they just needed, they just, they're just buffing Phobos, but they're not doing it in the balance stage like they're doing it here. So, anyway, uh, shotgun is good to 2 EP, cool. If I interrupt an enemy optives activation with track target, but then cannot complete the overwatch action uh can you shoot again yes cool so that's essentially the same clarification that guard got nice oh also you don't have to swap your order which isn't pretty nice that's cool uh right in cursor mine layer haywire mine weapon interference uh so instead of getting stun we get interference this is some sort of super stun each time a friendly optive makes a shooting attack with this weapon, in the roll attack dice step of that shooting attack, if you retain any critical hits, the target cannot move any further during this activation. That's important. Subtract one from the remaining action points the target has for this activation, if any. If it's outside of the target's activation, subtract one from the number of action points it generates in its next activation. Note that this is not a modifier to the target's APL characteristic. Cool. So um, yeah, that's that's a, a nice change for the incursor mine layer there. What's this really going to do? So it has the stipulation that it takes effect immediately within your activation, because right now when you generate APL, it then can't really be changed to after. So if you have three APL, your first action moves you th into the mine layer and they get a crit, you immediately lose an APL. Whereas before, it would just be the next time that you um, generate APL, you'd be at minus one. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Phobos. Uh, 
Vox Breaker. Change this action to uh, an ability. It doesn't cost any action points. Change this action to an ability. Was it not an ability? Uh, sorry. So, essentially, this is now always on. This is always on. While an enemy operative is within six inches of this operative, each time that enemy operative fights in combat or makes a shooting attack, in the roll attack dice step of that combat or shooting attack, your opponent can re-roll their attack dice. Cool. Nice. No, it cannot re-roll. So that's nice. Uh, I do like it. Uh, it just means they have a really cool six inch aura that is always on. That That's probably how this should have always been. So. Vet Guard, if a tactical asset is used, but there are no valid targets for it to be resolved, can I cancel the asset and use it again later in the turning point? Yes. This makes total sense. Again, um, this is almost exclusively to stop novitiates from breaking the game. So, good that they've done it. <laughs> oh, whoops. Uh, I apologize. I seem to have put a slight typo for, the, uh, for these guys. Um, also... There were no asterisks on anything, but they were updated. So I assume the only update they got was that um, they gained the, the shadows here, gained the psychic keyword. But yeah, okay. They were definitely updated and nothing had an asterisk. So I assume it's just that. Anyway, Warp Coven. With the changes to the Exalted Astarte strategic ploy in the balance state slate, can a gunner operative perform a shoot action, then a guard action? Yes, if one additional action point is subtracted to perform a guard action. Cool, nice. Hold on. Yeah, uh... Oh, okay, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, so that's fine. So, uh, the gunner had a weird thing where your first uh, uh, shoot action costs 1 AP. If you shoot again, it costs you 2 AP to make that second shot. Uh, so they're just saying, yes, that carries on here as well. We're fine, I guess. I don't, I, if I'm honest, I don't think that stipulation is needed, but whatever. Wormblade. For the purposes of the Cult Ambush ability, when, a, when an Wormblade? When an Wormblade operative makes multiple shooting attacks from one shoot action, e.g. Blast or Torrent, do the rerolls apply to all the shooting attacks from that one action, or just the first one, all of them? Cool, that's pretty useful, because let's be honest, when you were using Cult Ambush, it was to throw a, some sort of indirect weapon. So, nice. Gellapox Infected. Vol a Volgra Volgra thrice cursed can only be added to your roster or day state once. In narrative play, if this operative is slain, does that mean I can never add it again? No. In such instances, you could add this operative again, but you cannot have more than one of this operative on your roster or day state at once. Now, I already said this because we know that is it next? No, it's not next. So they already uh, GW accidentally early leaked uh, the Elucidian Star Striders and the Crute changes. Um, and this FAQ question here was the same one that Elusia Vane got. So I'm not going to bother to read it again, but when we get to Elusia Vane. But uh, for, I don't know, I thought it was some kind of unique, almost narrative. These people, once they're dead, they're dead. These are the true named characters of the game. Yeah, they get one shot kind of thing, uh, but no, it wasn't <laughs> typo. Uh, we then go over to the breaches, or the what are they? Imperial Navy breaches. Yeah, Navis Axe Jack changed the weapon to uh, power weapon to a melee weapon. Uh, the axe accidentally had uh, a ranged weapon symbol, so technically, according to the rules of the game, uh, it, it it had an unlimited range. <laughs> Obviously, it wasn't meant to, but yeah. Uh, Navis Endurance, Breach Wall Ability, change the relevant part of the final sentence to read unless the enemy operative is at least circle higher than it. Uh, this is in regards to how it protects uh, other operatives that are base to base to it. Um, I, I can't remember what, exactly what the original wording was, but I think it said unless the enemy operative is on a vantage point. So the question arose, if you're also on a vantage point, what does that mean then? Um, but they've changed that. If an operative is under the effects of a rule that prevents it from activating and or treats it as having a group activation characteristic of one, e.g. Omni Scrambler, Football Strike Team, can I use the Breach and Clear ability to activate that operative? No. So this is a, a good, and you know, ruling because generally the way Kill Team works, and 40k in general, but Kill Team, cannot beats can. That's 
if there's any two if there's ever two rules and one doesn't specifically say i win this this hierarchy of rules contest cannot always beats can so they might change that but let's get on to the intercession now i'm hyped to read this right because this could be the nerf that intercession needs because they buffed phobos let's have a read shall we if a rule treats an octave as being injured regardless of any rules that say they cannot be injured e.g. rust emanation, strategic deploy, gallop box infected, does the methodical chapter tactic still ignore the ballistic skill and weapon skill characteristic modifiers? No. So this is a big change from methodical... Hold on, let me read that again, because I don't want to say something dumb. Well, too late. If a rule treats an optive as being injured, regardless of any rules... Okay, gotcha. I'm with you. Um, cool, so that's probably a good change, because... Uh, Again, the negative effect is taking uh, precedence over the positive effect, I suppose. So, you know, cannot beats can. Um, and you do have to have this specific, uh, regardless of any other rules, almost always seems to win, but not in this instance. All right, let's move on. I need to read. I need to sit down and think exactly what's happening there. But if an intercession squad operative is incapacitated during its activation, can I use the Wrath of Vengeance tactical ploy freely, or do action restrictions still apply? Hold up. What is Wrath of Vengeance tactical ploy? Great question. Uh, that is, if you die, you can immediately t shoot. There you go. Action restrictions still apply. So with bolter discipline in mind, if that operative has already performed two shoot actions during that activation. You could not use Wrath of Vengeance to perform a third shoot action. That's good to know. So I honestly would have assumed that wasn't the case. Um, so yeah, good to see. Good to see it confirmed. So that is technically two nerfs for intercession. Obviously, it's not really going to affect anything, but good to know. Star Striders. Uh, so we have the Elusia Vein thing at the bottom there, same as the Volgarth Ice Cursed. We also have if a private support asset. Uh, is used, but there are no valid targets, can be resolved, blah. That is the same as the veteran guardsman just got. Uh, and then we also have, when using the well drilled tactical ploy, can I select another ready friendly operative as required, but then subsequently use a private support asset instead? No. So that is um, a good clarification because essentially it allowed you to GA to a model, much like the uh, Navy breaches allowed you to do with their breach and clear. This would cost you a CP to do, but it allowed you a GA to move. So what you could do was move one of your little mooks up, who you don't care about dying, immediately ploy, GA2, and use your support asset. Big damage, huge kills, because you, you're you suiciding a dude, but you're doing it in the knowledge that you can immediately hit them with the private support asset. This is probably the right call, but at the same time, it seems like the Star Strides aren't really making big waves, so who knows. Uh, we then go on to a Lacroot. Piercing shot and toxin shot equipment. Uh, add the following to both. Unless the operative is equipped with a Lacroot rifle, this ranged weapon has the range 6 special rule. Uh, so that's just good. It means that you couldn't put it on guys with pistols. Um, and suddenly they have a full range weapon. So that's probably the way it should be. Bit of a shame, but okay. And does the mercenary contract tactical ploy allow you to select a tack op from any unselected archetype or only from the unselected archetype the kill team has access to? Any unselected archetype, including infiltration and security. Cool. So that is also a good defining of the game. Um, because, again, it hasn't changed what's said. It's just saying, yes, we did mean this. Uh, it did say any, not any available. Cool. All right. And that's it. We got through it all. Uh, and of course, if you made it to the end of the video, I'd like to give you a big triple hello. The wholesomeness truly knows no bounds. Uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I do cool cards. Oh, that's the back of a card. That's also the back of a card. I do cool cards, data cards, uh, objective markers for my $10 patrons. That'd be awesome if you could support me. Thank you. And of course, you get a little freebie as a thank you for your support. With that said, I just have another channel where I mainly talk about 40k, probably why I built that Bane Blade, if I'm honest. Don't know why else I would have done it. Um, that'd be awesome. Cheers. Uh, 
Guys, what do you think about these changes? Oh, I also have a Discord and a Facebook and a bunch of other stuff, probably. There are links in the description. I also have merch. Talking of merch, I'm really thirsty. Lovely. A um, lot of changes here, a lot of changes. And I've got to say, I, I realize that a lot of these are just supposed to be like fixing typos and stuff. But it's kind of nice to get like a big change, like a change that actually is going to change the game. And I think we've got a few in here. I've got to be honest. Obviously, Phobos players are probably quite happy. You've just got a few buffs. Um, I don't, it's probably not enough to make them good. I think, but it's fine. Um, that was kind of the main one that really stuck with me. Everything else was, oh, obviously the, the nerfs to forward deploy. It seems like GW is trying to keep it pretty into the dark as a bit more sensible in a, in a sense. So it's a very defined board you're playing on, obviously, um, because they actually tell you how to lay it out. But I mean very defined and doesn't matter what rules we've given you no forward deploys no running through walls you just have to play the game as we know we've set the game out for you which i think is fine although i've got to be honest if i were just doing some narrative games i would totally let most of things these things happen less so the forward deploys i'm kind of okay with them not working but running through the walls i think that would actually be really fun that is, as long as um, the breaches and the worm cult don't like suddenly start absolutely dominating everybody because of it. But I think that if they're just kind of middle of the road teams, or maybe you're a lesser player playing into a slightly better player, you should probably be allowed to use them. Um, also, like very genuinely, I think the idea of once a game, no more, just being able to say, right, this guy can move through this wall, phew, sounds really fun, you know? So I'm not thematically as against that almost it could be like a, a generic ploy that everybody gets kind of you know we all get command reroll and we all get wall smash kind of thing so one operative can run through a wall once a game super fun okay well with that said everybody uh i'd I, you know thanks there you go yeah thank you for watching the whole video if you've made it this far uh what do you think about the changes um i think it was just a, a bunch of good clarifications there's not a huge amount more I can say. I'm sure that if we get into the WhatsApps and the Discords and the Facebooks and the and the here uh, Reddits, somebody's going to have a very different opinion to me on that. But yeah, we needed a bunch of these. We still need more. Um, but good start. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for watching. I will see you again tomorrow live when I'm playing. Grey Knights vs. Death Watch. Please tune in. Thank you. Bye.